Good morning, Eagle Nation. I'm Ruth. It's Wednesday the 13th. Hi, I'm Alex. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Happy birthday today to Kiana Goodhue. We have a very special guest today, Galway graduate, class of 2011, Karen Jackson Jensen. Ms. Jensen graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy in 2015, and she is now working and living in Okinawa, Japan with her husband, John, and her dog, Brutus. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's good to see you. Oh, hi, Igozamos from Okinawa, Japan, um, or good morning from the future. Uh, I know it's the afternoon for y'all, and I appreciate you having me on. So if you don't mind, we have some questions for you. First, could you tell us about the clubs and sports you were involved in in high school? So I apologize in advance for not necessarily remembering all of the clubs and sports. Uh, I've, been, I've graduated about 10 years ago at this point. Uh, it'll be 10 years next year. Um, but I was involved in um, a lot of different activities, both in and out of school. Um, I was involved in cheerleading in high school, as well as dance um, in middle school and high school. Um, I was involved in the footprint, um, National Honor Society. I was one of the class officers for the class of 2011. And then um, outside of school, I was involved in the church community, um, as well as Harmony Corners Fire Department and uh, Could you tell us where you've been working and living since graduating from the academy? So I've been all over the place at this point. Um, it's the past five years, moved around a few times. Um, I graduated from the United States Naval Academy, which is in Annapolis, Maryland in 2015, uh, May of 2015. Uh, in June of 2015, I started um, my time at the basic school in Quantico, Virginia, which is the um, very first place that Marine Corps officers will start their career. Um, they learn how to become basic infantry officers there first, um, and that's a six month course. So I was there from June until December of 2015. Um, in January of 2016, I moved to 29 Palms, California to start my military occupational specialty school. Um, and I was there as a 7210, which is an air defense control officer in the Marine Corps um, for three months. Um, following that, I went to my first duty station in Cherry Point, North Carolina. Um, I actually lived in Swansboro, North Carolina. It's a beautiful little part of the uh, ENC, the Eastern North Carolina. Um, and my husband and I stayed there until um, the middle of, 2019. So we were there for three years and then moved to Okinawa, Japan in July of 2019. Awesome. So do you think your experiences at Galway prepared you for your life and career today? In many ways, my life at Galway did. I mean, there were so many opportunities to take um, in both you know, the, the programs that I was involved in, um, and then also just in general, um, I think being a minority there in Galway um, kind of opened my eyes to the experience that I would have in the, the Marine Corps. I didn't know that I would have that experience at that point. Um, I actually had a vision of being in the Navy where there are a lot of um, different ethnicities. There are in the, the Marine Corps too, but um, the part that I'm most experienced for is just being one of one. Um, there are not a lot of females in the Marine Corps and um, it's kind of hard to, you know, keep that um, strength and courage in being one of one in the room if you don't have that background to begin with. So um, not only were the opportunities really helpful for me, um, the, the ones that I took being in Galway, but also just the experience of um, kind of understanding my values from the very beginning. 
So what would you say is the most exciting experience you've had by living in Japan? Well, I've only been in Okinawa, Japan for about, uh, well, since July of 2019. So uh, less than a year. Um, and actually, I wouldn't necessarily say it's been as exciting as I was hoping it would be um, with everything happening with the global pandemic um, here on Okinawa. But actually, about two weeks after my husband and I moved to Okinawa, I was sent with my former unit to um South Korea to work with um, some joint forces, but then also work with uh, the Republic of Korea Marines. And that was probably the most exciting experience I've had by far. Um, I mean, they're great people. Um, just the joint forces in general was just so eye-opening um, with you know what we're doing out here in the Pacific. So what do you miss most about home while you're stationed overseas? The thing I miss most is being able to drive home from work and call my mom. Um, I think it's kind of being so far removed from living at home and, and seeing my parents on a day to day basis. Um, it's nice to have that reminder that you still have people that encourage you or you know love you unconditionally um because sometimes it's just hard it's just uh you know when you don't get to um see the people you love all the time you take all those opportunities you can to just talk to them and, and spend time be it over the phone or you know on facetime um obviously not driving lots with facetime but uh you know over the phone with them when you can So how has the coronavirus affected your job and your life? In Japan, um, in Okinawa specifically, the coronavirus locally didn't seem to change much because in Okinawa, it's actually culturally um, not appropriate to sneeze in public or to like blow your nose in public. Um, and when we came here, I think it was just interesting to see the amount of people wearing masks out in public, um, and this was in July of 2019, but they were doing that because, um, you know, culturally, the idea is that you don't spread diseases or germs um, if you are sick and you have to go out, but if you are sick and you, uh, you, you wouldn't go out if you were sick, and if you do, you would wear something over your mouth and nose to protect the people around you. Um, so, you know, in the local community, it didn't really change too much, but um, here in, it's different for different commands. Um, I started working, teleworking um, every other week. So I would go into work one week and then um, stay home and, and answer emails and do phone conferences um, the next week. My husband has a different command, so it's different policies. Um, we still wear face coverings, um, but we also aren't allowed to go out and experience um, Okinawa the way we would normally. So we are restricted to movements on bases, um, which is a little bit difficult. Um, hopefully one day we'll be able to go out and explore a little bit more. So finally, we wanted to ask you if there's anything you would like to say to the Galway students and community. I actually wrote notes for this, and I hope you don't mind if I read a little bit of them. Um, but I, I wanted to talk to the students um, just because I think this was something that I, I wanted to or should have heard um, before graduating and going out into the world and experiencing all the things that I did. Um, so the first thing is, um, if there are opportunities you have to take, um, be it those made available through your own efforts, um, or provided to you, it will always be in your best interest to take advantage of those opportunities. Um, I don't think there was ever a time in the past almost 10 years since graduating high school that I said to myself, wow, I wish I didn't take that opportunity um, because it has opened my eyes up to so many other things that I didn't know I could actually you know, be a part of or experience. Um, the second thing is the successes you have in life will ebb and flow as your environment changes. Um, but those successes will always be dependent on the effort you put into your own life. Um, 
those successes aren't based on the people around you. Um, they aren't they aren't the fault of anyone else if you don't get the, the successes you want. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're you know maybe in a in a flow of successes that it it's just it's the way life is. Um, and the last thing is don't be afraid of failure. Um, failure is the feedback you need to help you improve your goals for the future. Um, if you open yourself up to a risk because you think it'll benefit your career or education, uh, the worst thing that could happen is that you get told no. Um, I can't tell you the number of boards that I've put myself on throughout my time in the Marine Corps and just got told no. It wasn't my time or I just wasn't, you know, the correct qualifications or um, I wasn't the, the the person they were looking for specifically for the job um, or the opportunity. Um, and, you know, my Marines will, the ones that I've had in the past will tell you the same thing. Um, you know, you'll always have that fallback of knowing that you put yourself out there. Um, and the only thing that you'll hear is no, and that's okay. Because when they do say yes to you at some point, that's going to be so much more valuable to you. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you and your husband stay safe. Thanks for having me, guys. Okay, so now back to our news. There are two senior athletes that we are honoring today, Russell Cook and Holden Decker. Russell Cook is an athlete on the track and field team as a thrower. He is also a wrestler. After he graduates, Russell Cook is excited to enter the workforce. Holden Decker is a member of the track team and the cross country team. His impressive times have earned him a spot on the track and cross country teams at Nova Southeastern University, where he will be studying marine biology in the fall. Don't forget to go to eaglesmediacenter.com to see all the senior athletes' complete profiles. New senior athletes are being added all the time. Be sure to check out the video section of Eagles Media Center site to see the latest episode of Anna and Anna, as well as the newest Me and the Boys episode. Check them out and leave a comment. We hope you have a wonderful Wednesday, Eagle Nation. Be sure you get outside. We will see you on Friday with our special guest, Mr. Miller.